Hey, so we were talking about woodwind instruments, and I want to continue with that by talking about the basic mechanisms for achieving that sound in the woodwind instruments. So how do you how do you drive the oscillations of these standing waves inside the tube to keep the sound going? And of course, we all know that that happens with our mouths, and it's different depending on whether we're talking about the flutes or the reed instruments. And I'm gonna start with the latter. So if you look at the clarinet or the saxophone, then up at the top, you've got just a single, what we call a reed. It's just a piece of, of cane, which is shaped into a particular flat shape. And so you see it's very thin here near the tip and it's attached to the instrument by this, what we call a ligature. So what happens is that that leaves a little bit of an opening for air to get in uh, from our mouth and the reed can vi actually vibrate back and forth. And so it can actually push all the way up to the mouthpiece and close off the opening or it can open wider and let more air in. For the double reed instruments like an oboe or a bassoon, what you have instead of having a mouthpiece that you attach a reed to it's actually just uh, one doubled reed so like that and you can see it also in the picture where there's an opening in the reed itself and uh, and so that again that could close or open because it's flexible okay so how does the reed help us drive oscillations in the tube so when we put the reed inside, well, we put the reed on the mouthpiece, and then when we play the instrument, what's happening is this is inside our mouth. Our lips are making a seal around the mouthpiece. And so it's like we have two chambers separated by this narrow opening under the reed, or sorry, above the reed. And so when you're playing, generally you're creating a high pressure situation inside your mouth. Okay, using, using your lungs, your airways, you're creating a high pressure inside your mouth. And then inside the mouthpiece, what you have is a varying pressure because at least once you're playing, you've got these oscillating standing waves inside the tube. And we've just seen that at the end of the tube, the closed end, which is the mouthpiece, then you have these large pressure variations. So what we're gonna see in the next slide is that this reed will actually oscillate up and down in response to these pressure variations on the inside of the mouthpiece. And the timing of this oscillation, it's in sync with the oscillations of air inside the tube. So it has the same period as the note we're playing. Um, and the timing is such that it's going to reinforce or so it's going to be such that this pressure from our mouth will drive the oscillations in the tube. So let me explain that using this picture that I spent a long time making blue dots for. Okay, so what's going on in this picture? Uh, the green is like the, the mouth cavity. And so we have a certain pressure inside our mouth and then into our mouth, we insert the mouthpiece. And so that's the top part of the mouthpiece. This is the reed on the mouthpiece. And I want you to just compare first the picture on the top left and then the picture on the bottom left. And so you see that inside the mouthpiece, there's a lot more air in the top picture than there is in the bottom picture. The dots are supposed to represent the density of air. And so what's going to happen is that when you have this situation, you know, say you go from less density or less pressure inside the mouthpiece to this situation in this picture, where you have more pressure than before. So then the inside force from the air is going to increase. And so compared to whatever the previous situation was, there'll now be more downward force on the reed. Okay, so as, as air comes to this end, and it pushes the reed down, the pressure inside the mouth is pretty much constant. And so then at that point, the opening increases in size. 
Okay, so the opening increases in size. And what that means is that this high pressure of air inside our mouth, now that is exerting more force. So that is allowed to kind of push on the air inside the mouthpiece, okay, which is already at high pressure. And so the high pressure in our mouth kind of even adds to that higher high pressure effect. So it's like the air rushes in and then just at that point, our, our, the air in our mouth uh, pushes back on it. And so that increases the pressure at the point where the pressure is already high. Okay, and then at that point, the air um, starts going away. So in the other part of our standing wave oscillation, the air moves away from the end. Now we've got a lower pressure situation inside the mouthpiece. And now you see that there's going to be a net upward force on the reed because the downward force of the air inside will will decrease so at that point the reed goes up towards the mouthpiece and actually sometimes if you're playing loudly it even closes off and so what that means is that this larger pressure region inside our mouth is no longer uh, pushing on the air in the reed okay so or sorry on the air in the mouthpiece okay so so you have air coming in you push push it back and then it goes out and then it comes back and you push it again. And so it's really just like, uh, it's like pushing someone on a, a swing. Uh, this is, I'm gonna credit that analogy to uh, Guy Moore at McGill University, who, who I, whose notes on the physics of music I, I read. Um, so it's, it's a good analogy. So you wanna just press right when the air comes to you and that's the way to keep the oscillation going. So if, if you add pressure every time the pressure gets large, uh, then it'll keep going and, uh, and you'll get the sustained note. And so that's basically how the, that's basically how the mouthpiece works, or at least to a first approximation, um, that's as far as I could tell the most important effect. Okay. And so it's interesting that, um, that the the reed ends up vibrating like at it's not vibrating at a frequency that it that is that corresponds to its sort of natural oscillation frequency like i could i could just take the reed and and try, kind of have it vibrate tap on it have it vibrate um that's not the frequency that it's vibrating with when you're playing a note um it's actually vibrating with the frequency of the note itself If you don't have a reed instrument at home, you might want to just demonstrate this effect. And so a great little experiment you can do if you can get your hands on a straw somewhere. Uh, it, it's a plastic straw in the picture, but I guess if, if you had some other kind of straw, whatever they're, whatever they're giving out these days, um, you can use that too. And the idea is that you can make a little instrument with what is basically a double reed. So this is gonna function very much like an oboe or a bassoon. Uh, if you just take the straw and you cut little segments off the end so that you're left with this V shape, okay? And so if, if you do that, then you'll find after a little bit of trial and error that you'll actually be able to play this thing. And it's pretty loud as you'll see. So let me try and demonstrate that here. All right, so depending on the length of the tube, you'll get different notes. You can even build yourself a whole set of straws. It's, it's one of the cheapest musical instruments that you can make and, uh, and then, you know, splice together a video and make a song. Okay, uh, just one last thing that I wanted to mention about the, some of the wood in, woodwind instruments, particularly the saxophone, is that there's a lot of interesting physics that goes beyond what I've, talked about already. Uh, so you have a great deal. One thing you notice if you play the saxophone, you have a great deal of control over how the note sounds. Maybe I'll just uh, do a, like a quick demonstration. So. <laughs>
Okay, so maybe that wasn't totally musical, but uh, it just demonstrates that uh, even playing particular notes, I could I can bend them up or down. Um, I could change the quality of the tone. And so all of that goes a little bit beyond what we've talked about. And it goes beyond what people have really understood about how these instruments work. But one thing that has been understood with saxophones in particular is that it's not just the instrument that makes a difference. Um, and it's not even just what you're doing with your mouth. It's really uh, also involving stuff going on inside your vocal tract. And so it's almost like you're playing not just the saxophone, but your the like part of your body, your vocal tract is an important part of the instrument for making the sounds. So I'll end with that. And I think next time we're going to get on to talking about brass instruments and then talking about the human voice. In